You need a bath in the moonlight. Most definitely. You just need a bath in combo water. You need some sunlight. You need some storm. And you probably just need a bigger bed because you're crying so quickly. Look at you. I know, I know, I know. I know you're very eager to, to hatch. Please be careful. Oh my goodness. They probably do call you clumsy for some reason, huh? Right, my little darlings. of dragons. Hmm. Yes. Oh, it's very nice to have you here. I'm very, very excited to share this with you. Hmm. Of course, yes. You want to take your time when choosing your egg, okay? Um, these ones are very special, but of course I did choose you for a reason because your grades are absolutely excellent. And, um, just overall I feel like you're a very compassionate and caring person, so I think that my babies will be absolutely fine with you. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, before I show you the eggs, I just wanted to say that, um, you do want to make sure that they are always content, okay? Um, some of them require quite a lot of work. Oh, you have dragons at home already? Okay. Oh, it's adorable, isn't it? I know, I just, I love that dragon breed. I mean, I love all of them, of course, but that one's very dear to my heart. I had one in our garden as well when I was little. Yeah. Yeah, he flew away at some point, but I think that was just because he was a teenager and he wanted to venture out. And Yeah, he found the love of his life and then I do visit him from time to time, yeah. He's still adorable. And the babies, oh my goodness. <sighs> yes, your dragon egg, of course. Now, um, yeah, they, they do all require quite a lot of space, um, even the little ones. Um, the biggest one, I would probably say, how big is your house? Round about. Okay. Yeah, the biggest one here is about double that size, so you might want to um, make sure that you either cast a little spell on the house, or that you just, uh, well, give it more space in the garden. Yeah? Okay. Good. Right, who do we start with? Who do we start with? Maybe... one is very eager to hatch. You can sense it. It's like you can almost make out a faint little heartbeat. Do you want to hold it close to your ear very gently? Yeah. It's very, very quiet. Very quiet. Now, this is Clumsy Pepper Peter. That is the actual breed name, yes. It is said that they are very, very clumsy. Um, so when they wander around the forest, they tend to stumble across um, a lot of tree trunks that they might not see and that they fall over. So um, it is not really clear or discovered yet why they are so clumsy. If it maybe is due to the fact that they get blinded by the sun, or maybe well, we don't really know. But these are so incredibly endangered, unfortunately, because the 
hunters are always on the lookout for the sparkles that come out of their mouth when they sneeze. Yes, essentially the inside of the dragon's mouth is plated with a layer of gold, silver, and a lot of other gemstones that are very, very popular amongst a lot of hunters. And um, due to the fact that this dragon is also very allergic to a lot of things, it sneezes a lot. So every time the dragon sneezes, there are some little glittery particles that will leave its nostrils or its mouth. So unfortunately it has a difficult time hiding due to this as well, because, you know, it kind of leaves a little bit of a trail, essentially. And, um, yes, of course, there are ways nowadays of um, well, collecting the uh, sparkles in a different manner, but the hunters are just, well, cruel and lazy, so unfortunately these sweet babies are often hunted down. So we are trying to keep them safe. And that is why I have one of these here, because its mother was kind enough to pass one on to me because she knew that I wanted to take care of it. Now, you being a very smart and well-read person when it comes to dragons, I think this would be a very good pick for you. These are very, very sweet. Now, its scales. Ah, this beautiful red, crimson colour. However, sometimes the shade of colour can vary depending on the dragon's mood. Okay, so if for example your dragon is upset or maybe feeling very hungry and just a little grumpy, then it could happen that the colour vanishes a little, becomes grey, has a bit of a grey sheen, so you always want to make sure that these babies are well fed and happy, okay? They love to play games, they love to fly around, so yes, yes, this dragon does have wings, of course we do also have dragons that don't have wings, or they have wings but they cannot fly, mm-hmm. So have amongst these little babies a water dragon. So you always want to make sure that there is enough to keep your dragon happy on multiple levels, okay? It has long teeth, but it is actually a herbivore, so it doesn't eat meat. It loves bell peppers, tomatoes, carrots, anything that somewhat resembles this shade. So you could also feed it some red grapes or um, maybe as a treat some chilli peppers, but not too often because their stomachs can't really handle the heat too well. Mm. No, this one does not spit fire. No. No, no. The only thing that does obviously come from the mouth is the sparkles. So, you just want to be very careful with that. And when it does sneeze or when it does leave some glitter particles, um, I would make sure to just dust it away yeah. because the hunters can also sometimes smell it. So, you want to be very careful. Yeah. So, this. Clumsy Peter Peeper. Peter Peeper. Peppa Peter, I mean. <laughs> Twisting my tongue over here. Peter Peeper. So, what do you think? Mm hmm? Yes, quite wonderful, I agree. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll put this one to the side at first, okay? you have a look at all of them first and then you just decide later on. Yeah? Great. Okay. So one, 
This one does need quite a bit of a bath, I have to say. Hmm. Oh, it's just sometimes it gets a little sticky on the outside, so you want to be careful. <laughs> so, this is the egg. Now, as the colours of the egg suggest, this beautiful, sweet little dragon comes from the Welsh moors. And it does prefer a colder temperature, most definitely. I would say anything between mm, 5 degrees Celsius and um, 20 degrees Celsius. Um, icy temperatures, it really does depend on the environment. If there are a lot of greens that it can cover itself with, um, or maybe for a while you could let him into that. This one is short and round, so it can fit perfectly into a little dog basket, if you will. This one is a very sweet and loyal dragon, and unfortunately sought after because of, well, you can already see in the cracks that this beautiful outside shell is what covers the dragon, and a lot of people use these for potion making. So. You would think that nowadays they find other things to combine with their potions. But, well. So, like I said, this one definitely prefers some cold temperatures. So, in the summertime, I would always make sure that you have some cold, icy drinks ready. Or maybe some peppermint sprigs in the garden just so that there is a more, well, cooling effect the air. Mm -hmm. This one also has an icy breath, so it's an ice fire breath, okay? So, if this one were to um, get a little angry, it might um, cause a bit of a frostbite. Um, it's not too dangerous for humans, I would say, but um, if you have smaller critters around the house, I would definitely keep them at bay because this one is very playful and sometimes doesn't understand that, um, well, it can hurt the smaller ones, so I want to be very, very careful with this one. Yeah. Well, this one isn't particularly moody, but it can get a little bit jealous at times, especially if there is another dragon in the house, or like I said, a different critter, maybe if you have mice at home, some rats maybe, or some cats, dogs. Also, if you give it a bit of a feel, this is a lot colder than the other egg. Yeah. Such a little cutie. Now, like I said, the outer shell is obviously covered by these beautiful green and turquoise shades. But the inside belly is a bit more of this shell. Kind of like the moors themselves. And, well, just I just think this is a great companion if it's your first dragon, I'd say. Because, well, they're small and easy to handle. And, well, great with other beings that are taller than one of my favourites, and they must be protected, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put them to the side, a little further away from the other egg, since of course we don't want to cross temperatures, okay? Right, ah uh, yes, come here little one. Oh, this one is very warm. we have the Australian Cactus Dragon. As you can see, the design of the egg is just absolutely marvellous. I've never seen anything like this before. 
I found it this year and I was just absolutely taken with it. Now, as you can see, the overall design of the egg is a somewhat pale orange colour and goes to a darker orange tangerine colour. So, obviously, on the ends of both sides, we have two beautiful flowers. Now, these flowers you can find in bloom on the tails of the dragon and if they are well fed and well loved these flowers will also extend onto the legs and the head of the dragon exactly now <laughs> I don't know if you can make out a certain scent on this egg give it a bit of a smell it does smell fruity doesn't it I was very surprised about that because these flowers are not edible to humans but some other little bees and some other little insects like to um, collect the nectar coming from these flowers. Um, unfortunately these are endangered as well due to the fact that hunters just collect the petals again for potion making and it's just such a shame. Um, luckily these are quite fast when it comes to flying so um, sometimes they do manage to escape but obviously hunters are unfortunately also clever enough to know how to stop them but well, I feel like as long as people like us are around you know it's it's giving them hope you know they can feel safe with us now these little babies do need a warmer climate, okay? So they obviously enjoy the summertime and the springtime, um, but in the winter I would definitely recommend that you keep them in your house close to a fire. Oh no, the flowers, they won't be affected. No, they actually love the fire. It's almost like they get this, this certain glow in the fire. It's very beautiful. And the little spores that come out, they really dance around the room and just light everything up. It's absolutely wonderful. So, so wonderful. I just love the world of dragons, don't you? So mesmerizing. Now, this one is actually not a herbivore. You want to make sure that um, she can roam around the garden and then pick up um, whatever she needs. No, she doesn't eat humans, but, um, she, well, she, she does need some meat, so, um, yeah, this one is also very warm. <laughs> sure. I'll put that to the side. Right. Now, we have two more here. This is the Sapphire Long Snout, which I am sure you will love. <laughs> this is quite a funny dragon, in my opinion. When I met its mother in the wild, um, it was in a dark forest. They usually just come out at night, so you can kind of tell by the dark colour of the egg that these are more nocturnal dragons and when I met the mother I got the feeling that they are a little well maybe a little lazy maybe a little snoozy a uh, tiny bit arrogant um, and it takes quite a bit for you to become their friend I feel or to impress them shall I say um, I had to do quite a few dances to even get her to look at me. Um, they are essentially, um, if I could compare it to any animal in the uh, realms outside of here, maybe, hmm, maybe a little 
little bit like a lazy cat. Yes, they do look somewhat feline from the facial shape. Um, however, these are very slow creatures, so... Um, yes, hunters have a very easy time finding them and catching them. Um, they are... Um, they don't really care all too much that they're being hunted down, I feel like. Just, well, because they take things as they are, you know, they just... But, um... Well, the reason the hunters take them is because, as you can see through the cracks here, there are some beautiful gemstone pieces that, um, that these grow on the belly of the dragons, so they are actually very good at finding other treasures that the hunters uh, do admire. Um, that's another reason why they're called long snout, because with their long snouts they can um, essentially smell treasure and lead the hunters to the treasures. Now, um, it were fine if the hunters just kept them as pets, but unfortunately they're not treated very nicely, so, you know, I just felt the need to save as many as I could so that they could live a normal, relaxed life with somebody that really cares for them, you know? This one definitely uh, needs a lot of food, so um, I do have some special food in the corner there in one of the boxes which I can give you. Um, it's just a little blend of a lot of different herbs um, and then uh, you would form them into cubes so that the dragon can chew on them. Yeah. Yeah. They do prefer very chewy things to eat because it lasts longer. Um, but yes, they're not very fussy eaters, but they do need a lot. They do need a lot of food, otherwise they get very, very grumpy. And, um, well, they can be grumpy for days, so... Yes. <laughs> um, so like I said, these are very, very slow, so... I would also say these would be suitable if you have maybe some family members that, um, well, aren't the fittest anymore. You know, maybe they're a bit older, or maybe they, you know, just have trouble walking for a long time, so I'd say this is the perfect companion, you know. Just needs a lot of love and a lot of food. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll put that to the side. No. every day. because they are only born every 50 years and hunters just hunt these for the fun of hunting so they're marvellous aren't they? these dragons are covered by this fuchsia colour but 
tails and their wings have this pearly iridescence to them which makes them fly the highest of all dragons some say that they have seen these flow through space at night but I can't be certain A lot of pressure. So, if you're thinking about, you know, pushing it along a little bit when it is moody, then you will have no luck. These are small but very strong. <laughs> yes, they do grow up to be about, um, well, I'd say maybe two hand sizes. They have a glow to them as well, mostly when they are in a good mood. So, these ones I'm very, very passionate about because I just want them to be safe. You know, these are so rare, and so delicate. And exactly. Um, not much is known about their personality type. Um, there aren't many of them, but um, the ones I've encountered are all very loyal, very sweet. Um, except for, of course, you know, when they are very angered by something, then they will, um, you know, produce their extremely hot, fiery breath. And um, if that happens, you do not want to be standing in the way. Because you will regret that and probably around a thousand people standing near you as well. Um, I haven't ever measured the length of their fire breath, but it's quite intense. So, despite them being very small and delicate, they also have a lot of power living inside them. Oh yes, you can also buy unicorn hair from me as well. Yeah, mine sheds so much hair. Yes, if you have any problems or any questions, you can always ask me. Yeah, my door's always open. You know, especially when people are just so wonderful and kind and offer to help with these majestical creatures. It's just, yeah, always makes me happy. So, um, have you thought of which egg you would like to take with you? hatching in around two days, so you want to take this right now into your hand, just like so. Very good. And then, um, basically what you want to do is, um, you want to keep it at the same temperature it is now, okay, and, um, keep it close to you at all times. So, even if you're taking a bath, or if you're out shopping, just always keep it close to you, okay? Because these ones, um, they do attach right away, and, um, yeah, you wouldn't want them to be alarmed when they, when they hatch. Okay? Great. Okay. Thank you so, so much. I'm just going to write that down, um, that you've taken this one. Um, would you like to keep the name or would you like to give it a, a name of your own? Yeah? Okay, great. Okay. Now I have your name and everything, so that's looking good. Right. Okay. I think that's it for today. <laughs> you don't have to do anything more. Um, I would say maybe in a few weeks you can come back. Um, or actually, you know what? I think I'm going to send you to my other friend. Just let me... There we go. 
Okay. Here's her contact. Um, I would like you to go to her just so that she can do some measuring for your dragon. Yeah. Yeah, she's an expert. Dragon expert. Yeah. I just like to look after the eggs because sometimes I, I think I'd feel like, you know, if there were dragons and eggs, I'd be completely overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, you best be going just in case it hatches sooner, but um, I wish you a wonderful day, and again, thank you so, so much for helping with this, and yeah, I wish you the best of luck and lots of fun, okay? Thank you so much. So, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon. Lovely.